Hey. Hey. Okay. Hey. Hey, yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Scotty Show tonight. I got a very dope guest, y'all. Y'all already know what it is, man. Bro, yo. This, bro, it's Acid Soldier in the motherfucking building, bro. Let's get it. How you doing, Acid? On the Scotty Show. Yeah. I'm good, bro. I'm good. Hell yeah, chilling. I went to a trampoline park today. Bro, I, bro, I never go to a trampoline park, bro, because I'm like, bro, like, it's, like, I wish it was, like, a, an adults only, like, you know, like, time. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, yeah, I be wanting no, to go to one, like, bro. I want to be doing some crazy shit, like, 360 dunks and shit. Yeah, like, some of... Uh, one of my friends who's like mad younger, like like a family friend, and like dragged me out to some fan, like some like fucking trampoline park today. That shit was so fried. I was like the only adult doing that shit. <laughs> bro, that's just bro, nah, that's just crazy, bro. It'd be hella, it'd be hella young ass motherfuckers in that bitch, bro. Like they just need bro. like a straight up, bro. If they if, if they had like an adult time where you could just get fucked up and then like just be in a trampoline park, it should be lit. Mad people would get super hurt. <laughs> I realized today that trampolines are for adults, bro. I mean, for kids, bro, not for adults. Bro, yo, that these shit. go out, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, that shit had me. That shit had my lungs gasping, bro. I realized I smoked too much. Yeah, bro. But, <laughs> yeah, no, but besides that shit, like, yo, what's good? Yeah, what's good, bro? Shit, man. Um, For the people that don't know who Ask the Soldier is, man, like, how would you describe, you know, Ask the Soldier? That shit's just, like, my music, obviously, like, bass shit, you know, real, like, positive, fun vibes. It's, like, some shit that you can get turned up to or listen to when you're, like, pressed about life or whatever. I got songs for every mood, you know? Hell yeah, man. Um, How did you, like, you know, start getting into music? Uh, so I started when I was, like, uh, 14 or 15. The first time I ever made music was with my bro, Jack. Um we made some shit. It was like a, like a like a cover of a Limp Biscuit song, like an acapella cover of a Limp Biscuit song. That shit was fried. But um, yeah, I just like I realized I like recording and shit, so I started making music like hella, and I started off with like some joke shit and everything, and then eventually I like found my swag and like really locked in on it. I I feel like I got like the Acid Soldier swag and like all that shit probably like late 2018 early 2019 and then like 2020 i got like serious about it and wanted to like really push it to be like my career and shit hell yeah um how did it feel when you started getting like you know a lot of people like noticing you like because you know it's like a grind with that shit but then once mm-hmm. you like once people start like fucking with your shit like how does it feel when people start fucking with your shit like we you start noticing that well i feel like it's important to not like get comfortable you feel me like Cause that's mm-hmm. when you lose your momentum. Like it's cool that mad people fuck with the shit, but it's like I gotta keep going and keep pushing, otherwise I'm gonna get stuck and stagnate. You feel me? So it's like one of those things where I'm always like super grateful for it, you know. But it inspires me to just go harder, you know. Nice. I feel like uh, like when I noticed that it started like really popping off, I was just like mad ecstatic about it. I still am every day, you know. Like when I look up my shit and see people talking about our music or like look at the comments and see people showing love or scroll through TikTok and hear my song when I'm not even, like, looking for my shit. That's always, like, yo, this is dope, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, like, all the people that tell me that they really fuck with my shit. I'm hella, su- hella appreciative of all the supporters, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what was, like, one of your most, uh, like, what would you say, like, your favorite collab, like, with an artist is? Like, who would you, like, you know, say, like, your favorite collab was so far? Hmm. Well, I mean, like, there's a lot of different instances and in like what makes my favorite collab my favorite collab. Mm. Like my favorite collab that I've done over the internet, like probably is like uh, either my shit with nephew or like some of my songs with mm. Shane. You know, free, mm. free to Shane. Yeah. But uh, my favorite collabs that I've ever made, like I really enjoyed cooking it up with Chris Too Easy and Christ Dillinger and Pistolero in real life. You know, those are the bros. Hell yeah. After making music with Chris online for like five plus years, being able to actually record with him in real life was so lit. And then um, cooking up with 10K is always fun. Me and 10K make mad fire music. So whenever we get a chance to link up and record, that shit's like 
beautiful, you know? Yeah. How does it feel to, like, you know, when you... Because it's, you know, the online shit is cool, but there ain't nothing like linking up and getting fucked up with your homies making music, bro. Like, there's bro, nothing like real. the real life shit, bro. Like, the real life shit give you that fucking, like, that dopamine. Like, that shit be, like, lit mm -hmm. as fuck. It'd be, like, a really good feeling, bro. Like, how do you feel about that I, shit? I hadn't linked up with anyone to cook up in real life until this year, actually. So, mm. 2023 is the first year I actually did in real life cookups with other rappers and shit. 10K came over to the crib. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we ever did that when 10K and Brody Bass pulled up and we all recorded and shit. Yeah. That was mad fun, you know? Like, it's a different kind of headspace for sure because everyone's just bouncing off of each other and coming up with fire shit and helping each other come up with the best bars and shit, trying to, like, make a crazier verse than the last, you know? So it's definitely a different vibe. There is something about cooking up by myself, you know, just doing shit mm -hmm. like when I'm like alone and I'm cooking up and I'm making song back to back that that's really like my favorite. But I really do enjoy making music in real life with other people, you know, mm -hmm. and it, I feel like it also uh, like because like I, would you say like you're comfortable just being by yourself like there's and and uh, like just getting that shit like out and done because you do you feel the most confident by yourself cooking up or do you feel like a, I mean, a little nervous like performing in front of like because i'll be because i'm a comedian sometimes like mm -hmm. i'll feel like like if i'm performing with like you know like comedians i know are monsters and i'm cool with them i get nervous like and sometimes yeah, you know, it will affect my performance in a way but it'll, it'll either make me or break me like type shit like i'll either like mm -hmm. come like shining or like i'll be like okay like Today probably wasn't my day, and we gonna we gonna you know get back on the horse type shit. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, no. You, you ever feel like that kind of way? Yeah, no. I mean, I've definitely had some bunk shows. You know, I've only played four shows, but I'd say more more of them were ass than good. You know, yeah. like, but when it comes to like cooking up with other people, I don't feel that kind of like nervousness whenever I'm making music. Mm. You know, like recording yeah. because that's more yeah. like. That's more like, you know, what we do all the time. But playing it live, that shit's a little bit more stressful, you know, because, mm -hmm. like, fucking, uh, obviously, there's the fan reception, like, the crowd reception and making new fans out of the crowd Bro. and shit. You know, there's a lot more that goes into Bro, it. I know I'd I, say, yeah, yeah no, nah, like, I'd say the most um, awful show I had, like, the most nervous I ever got doing that shit probably like the second show I played at Super Happy Funland, shout out to that venue and the owner and everything, but mm. uh, they didn't have any acts booked or anything for that night. So they kind of like gave me control of who was going to play. They they wanted me to put together a set list and shit. So I, I, I had like way less juice than I do now. I only had like a couple thousand followers on Instagram. And when I posted about the show happening, like the worst of the worst came out to like slide up to be on the ticket and i let most of them on because i didn't really like know better and then like the show ended up just being mad ass there were mad people there that sucked <laughs> oh, performing. Crazy. like the that people crazy. that popped out to see me live they were telling me like bro you gotta like get up there and save the show bro you gotta like come on dude like please hurry up and play your set bro <laughs> like and i felt bad because yeah, like bro. i saved my set for last you know yeah. but no, nah, yeah. bro, it, it really be like that sometimes, bro. I've been on show like, I remember, because it, it really be a grind, bro. I remember doing shows, and, like, it'd be two people. And then now, like, you mm -hmm. know, I progress, and, like, I've done I've done a show in front of 300 people, which is, like, it's crazy. It's a whole different, like, feeling. Yeah, and bro. When it's, I did... it's a real progression, bro. It's a real progression type mm -hmm. shit. My first show, I'd say there were probably, like, 20 or, like, 20 people there at most. My Damn. second show, maybe, like, 15. And then my third, I did, like, 150 that's, and then hey, my, that's wild. my fourth uh um was 550 at the fiona's world shit in new york that is crazy so that is crazy yeah that one was lit i really fucked with that playing in front of 550 people was mad hot in there oh, it smelled like <laughs> smelled like the haunted mount subreddit up in that shit <laughs> oh my god that's wild <laughs> but yeah, oh, no. man, that's wild, bro. Um, 
But uh, so so far with music, man, like where like where where do you want to like take this? Like, do you? I know you because uh, I know we talked and like, do you want to? You know, I know you said you want to you know go to New York with it and shit like that. And then like like where else do you want to take it? You know, you're in New York. Like, what do you what do you see like happening for yourself? Uh, man, I really just want to like. I really just want to like get to the next level. Like I love being underground and I love the underground scene, but I want to get up so I can help put on for it harder. You know, like I'm ready to like, I'm ready to be at the next step. You know, yeah. like this shit is like, there's like certain shit with like being in the scene and stuff. that's just kind of like negative, you know, mm -hmm. like there is with everything, but I'm ready to like get to that next level where I don't have to work like a day job and I don't have to like, do this and that and i can just like chill out and like make music and mm -hmm. put on for my family and my people and shit bro like that's like one thing that i always say in these like you know reaction videos that i do to like albums mixtapes or, or uh, music videos and stuff like that i say bro mm -hmm. y'all should want these underground artists to start making money and get and you should want them to go mainstream you should want them to get signed that, yeah, cause that's, yeah. the, that's what the progression is supposed to be like you're supposed to go under like and that's how we had that natural flow of artists that's how it's always supposed to be that's how mm -hmm. it always has been you start underground you get your name known you start making money you get signed to a label and then next thing you know you can put other people on and then you set yourself up and your family up you should you bro like if if our that's exactly the goal bro like and this is the main this is one of the main things i said bro do y'all want these motherfuckers to like to like have to rap at like 38 and 40 or do you want them to do it as a hobby because they made so much money and they can give y'all good projects they can give y'all good music and mm -hmm. they're not making music under stress like and that's like the thing that i'll be telling them i'm like bro like you want like that's like the natural progression of music and, and, and artistry and I, 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 yeah, no. I don't know why, i don't know why people be gatekeeping bro people need to stop gatekeeping bro, bro. I, gatekeeping I know how music. it is I have a general opinion that gatekeepers don't genuinely like the music. They just like like being unique for liking music that other people don't like, you know? And it's like, at the end of the day, that shit's cool. But, like, if you genuinely care about us, like, you know, not just me, but, like, 10K, Zave, Chris, everyone, mm -hmm. you should want to see us eat, you know? Because, like, there's no, there's no, like, continuing of this shit if eventually we got to settle down, you know? If you fuck with this shit and you want to listen to it for the rest of your life, don't gatekeep, <laughs> you know? Bro, like that, and it's just that people will critique this music but not know where y'all inspiration is coming from. And, like, they don't mm -hmm. know, like, the history of, like, you know, underground music. They don't know. A lot of people, well, there's a lot of people nowadays that I would say that don't know about Lil B, and they, and they probably don't, genuinely don't listen to his music, and they don't understand it. I think. I'd agree with that statement. It's there's sad, people, but it's true. People that don't under, understand Space Ghost Perp and like the and even though he's whack, he's crazy mm -hmm. and all that shit, they don't understand the influence. <laughs> they don't understand like the influence that he had, Black Cray and all these other artists that like influenced he, I would say even Lil Peep. Mm -hmm. Like and I would say there's so many yeah, other bro. artists there's so many other artists that like had like an influence on, you know, the the, the people that's coming up type shit. And Little Peep I, definitely had a big influence too. I feel like a lot of people, me included, saw him come up that quick, mm -hmm. doing something different, and got inspired. You know, bro, there's mad like, people from that time period were like that. Bro, Wicked Phase, all them, bro. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I, I still fuck with Wicked Phase, bro. I, like, uh, he had a, a concert out in uh, Chicago, and I went to that show. I was like, bro, I fuck with, like, I still fuck with, bro. Like, and I still be like, yo, he's definitely underrated. And it, it just yeah, you know, there's just it's mad good. Yeah, yeah. I just it just sucks when like um the just like the gatekeeping or like people not because they don't understand music or they don't understand underground like history, they they mm -hmm. deem stuff like not good or trash without trying to understand the concepts, the uh the, the point of references and like I really don't mind haters. Like, haters don't bother me because they boost the algorithm. Like when they comment and then your fans start arguing with them, it's like yeah. You're just boosting my my engagement yeah, right yeah, now, bro. Because yeah. like one hate comment turns into ten replies, and then boom, you got like eleven more comments on your shit. Fuck yeah, keep hating, please. You know, that's yeah. how I feel. That's facts, though. That's facts. Like, uh, all, even like, uh, good like uh, press is good, whether it's good or bad. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's some really bad press. Yeah, 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 yeah. really bad. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's some, like, unless it's some like some out of pocket shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, but mm -hmm. like other, other than that, like if niggas is just hating on you, then that's what it is. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah, that's fire. I mean, mad people hating on Xavier on Twitter right now. <clears throat> that shit. 
That's just a sign, you know. Bro, they were hating on Young. To that shit. They were really... hating on Young Thug, man, bro. They, I remember being in middle school. People would tell me, "Bro, why are you listening to Young Thug? He's trash." Yeah, bro. bro. I'm like, and now he's like one of the biggest artists. <laughs> yeah, and now like everyone knows Young Thug. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, and and then another thing, bro. People don't allow. I would say, uh, people don't allow the artists to like develop and like work on new sounds, work on new styles. Like they're quick to like judge like the new music and be like, oh, go back to like the old shit. Go back to like, you got to like, do you think that you have to like, you know, do different stuff in order to feel inspired with music or even to continue to do it? Um, I've made a lot of the songs that rock the same flow. And I feel like it's a double edged story, right? Because Mm. you got, you got to like set your swag and your style, right? Yeah. So when I get on the track and I got that Acid Soldier flow <clears throat> and it's the Acid Soldier mixing, it's the Acid Soldier beat, and it sounds like every other Acid Soldier song, that's not really a bad thing because it's just sur- further solidifying my sound and making me less biteable. But at the same time, you got to keep it fresh. You can't always drop something that sounds the same. So recently I just dropped two EPs that kind of had like the same cadence and flow. So I'm working on like a little project right now that's like uh, mad different shit just to see what the fans like and see like where I should go with that, you know, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, obviously I got like a project that I already finished that's ready to go out yeah. and I got like, I got shit like that, but like I'm always creating, making new shit and trying to level up and these snippets I've been posting on my Instagram, the fans have really been receiving well with the new flows and shit, mm-hmm. so I think, uh, yeah, that's what's going to go down. I think you have to have a good balance, you know? Yeah, I, I, and, like, I definitely think that that's, like, hell important. I fuck with, like, you know, that you're trying to, like, you know, do different stuff and, like, and you're going to be putting out some new shit, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what it's like, bro. It's all about, like, the evolution, like, because it's, it's a part of, like, the history, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's yeah, no. like it, it just shows, like, the evolution of you as an artist and you're just building, like, mm-hmm. that catalog out. And that's another thing artists don't understand. Like, a lot of people... And I'll see, like, a lot of, like, new, like, you know, smaller, you know, underground artists, they'll say, like, man, nobody fucks my music, but they be dropping, like... Once a month. Yeah, like, don't even be, like... I just be like, bro, you don't even be putting in that much work to even be demanding bro. that kind of, like, respect. Like... When you don't have, like, at least 5,000 on SoundCloud and at least 10 on Instagram, dropping less than once a week is not enough. It's you know, like, If you're dropping once a week, that's, like, the bare minimum, honestly. Like, because... When I like really started and like I still do this periodically, just spans of like tons of songs coming out in a week. Like sometimes if you peep my shit and my stories and stuff, you'll see like I'm dropping like one song one day and then a DJ page is hosting a new song the next day. And then I got a feature dropping the day after that. And then I have like a small EP that drops three days later, you know, so like you got to like really, really, really push your content out, push your sound out and shit. And it's like one of those things where like, you know, just because everything that you're dropping doesn't sound new isn't always a bad thing, you know, like a comedian, like, because you said you're a comedian and stuff, you know, it's like, you don't go to every show and tell different jokes every time, only different yeah, jokes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you tell the same joke because you know it's a hitter and you know that the same people aren't going to be listening to that joke, you know? Yeah. Like, if I do the on deck flow three times and it hits three tar- target audiences, that's like the point you know like Mm -hmm. but it's not to be lazy you know you gotta you gotta evolve you gotta like stay on top of it you gotta like hear the fans out and not get pressed when they want new shit yeah so like or when they want old shit yeah like so like for me like me putting out new shit like the the equivalent for music would be going to like small bars and trying out new material like going to like yeah mics and stuff like that because like like for me to like, you know, cause you could like record a song and be like, cause that's like you like, you know, in the dojo working out type shit, you know, at the gym mm-hmm. working out like that's you, like you recording, you know, uh, like in your home studio and stuff like that. That's you working out, yeah. me working out. I have to go to like the open mics. I have to go to like, you know, like the, like the smaller uh, comedy clubs and stuff like that. And then work the new material in front of people. So like, yeah, I'll tell you, there's more pressure with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm saying so like the only way I, cause I can write a joke out and be like, yo, this shit funny right here, bro. Like this shit go like I can write that shit out right here and think that it's funny in my head, but I won't know that it's funny unless I go out and like do it yeah. in front of people. <laughs> and like, yeah, that's like, kind of what I was. 
Yeah, and, and, and it's the same thing with you posting like your snippets and stuff like that on your Instagram story. That's pretty much like, you know, you just showing your audience like, yo, this is what I'm working on. How y'all feeling about this shit? You know what I'm saying? Because you yeah, can be like, yo, right. this song is fire, but you could, you know, you post that shit on your Instagram story and then people be like, yo, this is gas right here. Like, I'm always trying to show the fans what I'm working on. I've probably played every single unreleased song I've had in the past few months on live and like all that shit. Hell yeah. Except for like features and shit. Hell yeah, man. Um, all right. Uh, what else can people be expected from, you know, in the future? Uh, what you, uh, you know, I know you said you got that, uh, the, the new project coming out. Uh, what so I got two right now. Like I got mad different EPs in the work. Cause I work on multiple projects at once. I got this small EP. It's going to be like a five track called Bleach Diego. It's like all different flows and shit that should be out soon. It might even be out before this interview comes out. And then I got an EP with my bro, DJ Nightmare, or Sniff, or whatever. You know, we've been working a lot. He's been mixing a lot of my new music. We've been doing a lot of collab. So we got another collab EP coming out. It's a sequel to our first one. Uh, I got a full-length tape, Prod, CP, and Crook. Like, they co-prod every song on it. Uh, that's, like, nine tracks, features from 10K, Zay Kid, Travis Santana, Kino Pro, all that. Uh, that shit's called Darth Acid. It's dropping soon. I just got to get this video for it finished. And then I'm going to drop the video, then the tape after. Uh, I got shit in the works with this producer named Crying. They've uh, produced like a lot of shit for Lil Yacht and shit. And, like, other people like that. They're mad fire. Uh, what else? I got a project on the way with my bro Pope Flames. Uh, me and Christ Dillinger have a tape on the way. It's posted by DJ Smokey. Uh, so there's there's mad shit coming, you know. I'm missing projects there too, you know. Mm-hmm. So there's no lack of Acid Soldier music that's gonna be coming out in the next few months. That's crazy. If I got crazy. locked up, it'd still be mad music. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's wild, but like that's that's just crazy. Like how much music you got like stored up, and then like how much you're working. And like I hope a lot of other artists like they notice that like you putting in work. And you also have like, you know, real life shit that you got to deal with and you still making time to put in work. And that's what it's all about. People don't. And I hope that's the game that people get from you. And if they understand that you even though you got real shit, like real life shit going on that people, other people may not know about, you still handling mm-hmm. business. And that's what it's all about. bro. Yeah, no, exactly. Like Being I work consistent. and shit. And I got like hella shit that goes on in my real life, you know, but it's yeah. like one of those things where you got to stay on top of it. If you're really passionate about it, you really have the drive for it and shit. And like, uh, what's it called fucking I, i'm always trying to get free game and shit when people hit me up if i have the time i'll always tell them what i did to get where i'm at that doesn't mean it's an open invitation to dm me and ask for free game yeah. and give it away <laughs> in my too. Yeah, yeah. but like yeah no like i'm always just trying to like help put on shit in this new song on this diego ep i got like a whole like 12 bars just about like my experience coming up and shit and like things you have to do decisions you don't want to make and shit you know so Mm -hmm. that's one thing i've been trying to pivot towards is getting more topical in my songs you know like having a focus topic for an entire song and making a whole song out of it like that timu track i dropped or that tipping song i dropped you Mm -hmm. know that shit It's, it's like it's mad fun to have like one topic for an entire song and just rail on it the entire time that shit's always fun yeah all right man Man, it was it was really good to chop it up with you, man. I'm glad that we got to get this uh, interview in, man. Um, I appreciate yeah, you for pulling up, man. And like, uh, you know, I, I just appreciate you for even, uh, you know, posting it on your uh, my reaction on your Instagram story, bro. Like, I, it just shows that like you like you really show love to people, and uh, you know, you're not like you know, yeah, you're, you're down to put some you're, you're down to put somebody on that like you know. You, you down to show love back type shit. Like, you you know, no faking. You know, I fuck with that, for real. Yeah, bro. It's always about just, like, spreading love in the community because, like, mm-hmm. you know, your shit's going hard and you got cool shit going on. And if your platform grows and we work on shit, then by extension, my shit's going to grow. It's all about helping each other out and trying to, like, get up in this shit bro. because I want to see you succeed too, bro, you know? And it's like, bro, yeah. I want to see everyone in the scene, scene succeed. There's like only like maybe two or three people I could think of in the music scene that I actually want to see their downfall. <laughs> but <laughs> like, but like as far as everyone goes, you know, no beef shit ever has made me want to see someone like not eat off of this music shit. Because from me and my perspective, and I've always thought about this, like you 
should never be trying to take away someone's music from them unless they did something absolutely heinous because Mm -hmm. like this shit is our life you know like i want to make my future this shit i want to make my whole career this shit so it's not like my type of character to go and want to like cancel someone or see them be brought down just because i don't like them you know like if you're doing some flaw shit and you deserve to get like called out that's a different story but like there's like uh there's a lot of like love, you know, and I feel like it's been spread in the community more mad people showing love to each other because the the main thing to understand is, you know, if you're not showing love to other people, you're not going to get love back. That's why people that be mad and angry all the time and the shit just get clowned on because they it's don't selfish. show love to the fans. <laughs> they don't show love to the other people. And then people see that shit and they call them out. Yeah. You know? it, it's like that. It's like, yo, support like local businesses when it's your business. <laughs> only when it's your yeah. like like because yeah. you opened up your your local business you want everyone else to support it but you have been supporting no one no one else's local it's, business yeah it's like opening up a local like grocery store or coffee shop or something mm-hmm. and driving around with a thousand bumper stickers that say support local business but then you get starbucks and walmart yeah you know like that shit's fried <laughs> bro it's just, it's just crazy as hell man and, and another thing i think you know i always say is yo if if one person wins in the underground, we all win because it's gonna be an iceberg. It's like a you know, it's going it's like a it's like a chain, it's like a chain of events because so many people yeah. are linked to so many other people. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, bro, that's what I've always said too, you know. And I try to tell my homies they get kind of discouraged in this shit that I'm always like, yo, if one of us is eating, then we're all eating. Because even if you're not getting as many plays as me, if you're on the splits for all my songs, you're gonna be getting the same bag I'm getting. You know, bro. People are gonna be making. Let's just say you blow up crazy, bro, and they do a before they were famous or like, bro, like even like these like mini documentary like you know YouTube channels are like blowing up, and next thing you know they're like linking people that you know that that are to you, and then next thing you know that's putting on other people. So I don't look like I said like I, I just look at it like that like, and that's how I found out about so many other artists because I watch music videos and when I watch them I pay attention to who's in the video because. The people yeah, in the background yeah. are just as important as the artists. <laughs> yeah, bro, especially in these videos coming out of New York, like with Zay Guap Kid and Xavier been dropping, and me and Chris with the Juan Pablo video. Every head in those videos is important, bro. Every single person mm-hmm. in those videos be making music. Every single person, for the most part, you know, I'm not going to speak for everyone. But, yeah. like, if I'm watching those <clears throat> videos, I see all of my homies in that shit. Like, watching that one uh that one video is Zay Guap Kid and Xavier. I do what you would and, and you should. And yeah. that shit's mad hard. And fucking a bunch of people I met while I was out there were in that video. And shout out to my bro Pistolero 2K because he's been in every single music video I've watched in like the past month. That's <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Um, but man, it was like I said, man, it was good having you on here and chopping it up with you, man. Yeah, dude. I'm glad that the uh, you know the people the you know can hear a. Uh, uh, I feel like I hope this is like one of like your best, you know. I feel like I hope this is one of your best interviews. Uh, I feel like it is, bro. You're mad personable, you know. Like I definitely. <laughs> the last interview I did was like really good, but it was like a written interview, so not a lot of people peeped it. And then the interview I did before that, this dude had his Discord notifications on while he was interviewing me, so mad people kept hearing ping, 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 ping. And you go in the comments on that video, all of them are like, bro, turn your notice off, bro. You can't even hear what bro's saying. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that, yeah that's foul as hell, man. <laughs> but shit, like, uh, anything that, uh, want we'll, to we'll plug socials on here at all? Uh, I mean, everything is Acid Soldier, Acid Soldier, one word, you know. Uh, SoundCloud is spaced out, Spotify is spaced out. Instagram and Twitter, it's one word, you know. I don't really be anywhere else. Uh, I'm a TikTok, it's Acid Soldier, but. You fucking with the I'll, threads? I'm Nah, I'm not fucking with threads. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, what's it called? I want to shout out just like all the bros and shit. You know, if I miss anyone, that's my bad. But Chris Too Easy, CP, Mr. Cheezle, Xavier, Luke, Farnum, Catharsis, Diego, Sniff, Kino, you know, uh, fucking Euro, Octi, Lero, Zegua, you know, fucking Defecile. Kill Cartier, Glosuka, Gibby, Fear Dorian. Uh, the list goes on and on. Mad people that I love. Christ Dillinger, fucking 
everyone's super cool. I love everyone. All of my friends, they, they deserve a platform and shine, you know? Hell yeah. uh, Brody Bass, 10K, Bass Plug, fucking just anyone that I work with, really, that's on my main page and shit. They're, they're all super valid, and I love them all, you know? Yeah. So go listen to them if you're not already. Hell yeah. Shout out to all them important people. This is the Scotty Show. As a soldier, thank you for pulling up, homie. Hell yeah. Thank you. And for the last time, shout out. Shout out DJ Fat, DJ Renacy, Vivid Disclosure, a.k.a. Ben Scoring, DJ Grenade. You know, all, all the DJs, I fuck with hey. them, bro. They're all fire. You know, Nino Andretti, I fuck with them all. You know, they're all yeah. fine. I love those dudes. Shout but, out to the guys. Let's get it. Hell yeah. Well, it was good chopping it up with you, bro. I'm going to let you go. You know, I appreciate you. Hello. <clears throat> no problem, G. This is the Scotty Show. Peace out, Ask the Soldier. Be easy. Hell yeah. Hey. Okay. <laughs>